Hello and good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be with you here today. And today I'm going to talk about some of the challenges associated when, with applying uh, artificial intelligence, specifically deep learning, uh, to medical imaging uh, applications. And then I'm going to provide uh, some solutions various methods have taken to address uh, those challenges. So first off, I'm going to give a, a brief overview of how supervised learning works. All right. So the first thing we need is a data set to do a supervised learning. The first thing we need is a data set. And uh, so what do we mean uh, by a data set? Well, it depends on the task that uh, we want to solve. Assume we want to learn a model that can classify between cats and dogs. For this, uh, we need a data set con consisting of many pairs of images and their associated annotations, meaning that um, a, an annotation that says this is a cat or this is a dog. This is known as l labels in uh, machine learning terminology. So um, I'm showing the observation by X here and the annotation uh, by Y. So our data set needs to contain images of all the classes we want to classify. Here, uh, these classes are uh, cats and dogs, only two of them. We need to have a lot of images and uh, we need to have diverse images. So images from different angles, different backgrounds, and, uh, and so on. The goal is to train a model on this data set and see if the knowledge learned uh, on this data set can generalize to unseen images not included in this data set. Uh, this is known as generalization. So we want to see if our model has a, a good generalization ability, right? Uh, so, uh, so how do we do that, right? We start off by the first pair. The supervised learning is, is, no, is called learning by observation. And this is how the process goes. We, we start by the first pair. We take the image uh, part of the uh, pair and pass it to the model and then use the annotation to tell the model this is an image of a cat. We continue this process for all the examples in the data set. Uh, this is similar to how we um, learn in as ch children, how we learn in school. Now, um, the output of the model, this is uh, how inside of the uh, neural network looks like. We'll get into that uh, in the next slide. Let's talk about the, the output uh, of the model first. The output of the model is a probability vector uh, with the number of dimensions similar to the number of classes. So for example, in the, in the previous problem when we had only um, two classes, the dimensionality here would be two. It would have two elements, right? Here we're, we're thinking of a problem set where we have, uh, for example, six classes uh, designated by, di by different uh, colors. Now each element in this probability vector says what is the probability of the image i belonging to a certain class. Uh, and this is uh, the, the probability distribution imposed on the output is uh, known as categorical distribution. Right, so uh, we want to learn uh, the model, we, we, we want to train the model in a way that maximizes, sorry, we want to train the model in a way that uh, maximizes the probability of the correct label. Here, the red class, right? We can do this by using uh, the ground truth label, and that's why we need uh, a pair of examples, right? We, we need the, the input data, I, in the, yes, the, the image, and its associated ground truth, right? And using that ground truth, we define a loss objective, which essentially says, uh, what is the amount of mistake my model is making, right? And then we update the parameters in a way, in the direction that would minimize this loss function. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about the, the parameters of the model uh, very shortly, but, uh, 
it's important to note that um, we we update the parameters in a way in the direction that would minimize this loss function. This is called as gradient descent. Uh, we iteratively repeat this process. Uh, we give input examples to the model. We compute the loss. We update the parameters in the direction of minimizing uh, that objective, right? So we have new parameters. Using those parameters, we compute the loss again on the on a new image, which is introduced to the model, and then we update the parameters again. So we repeat this process multiple times until uh, this loss objective is minimized, and that's where we can stop the training and and do check the generalization ability. So let's delve uh, into more detail of what goes on in the black box of neural networks. Uh, the neural network consists of multiple layers uh, shown by these blocks, right? In terms of functionality, the layers of a neural network can be divided into two sections, the feature extraction layers and the classification layer. The classification layer could be one or more than one layer. In the feature extraction section, the early layers extract low-level features, and the latter layers extract high-level features. The layers essentially do the same operation, but because they are placed one after the other, they extract features in increasing levels of complexity. Uh, the first layer, for example, uh, let me give you an example uh, of what we mean by that. Um, since the first layer operates on the image itself, it extracts very shallow features, such as uh, edges, dots, in, in color images, this could be color. The next layer combines these features and produces a slightly higher level feature. This process uh, continues until we have a very high level features. Uh, until we have a very high level features in the latter layers. Now, what distinguishes neural networks from classical machine learning is, is actually this process, right? Through minimizing uh, the objective, right? The neural network is actually learning features that they need to solve the task. This is in contrast to uh, handcraft features like in classical machine learning techniques. Here, we the model is learning its own features. So uh, usually it learns more discriminative features, but to do that, it requires a lot of data. Now, uh, deep learning models have been applied to many areas such as computer vision, uh, speech recognition, and natural language processing. Usually, they've had a great amount of success in each area, mostly because there's a lot of data av available through internet and uh, big data. Uh, in, they've also been applied to medical imaging uh, tasks as well in detection, segmentation, and even diagnosis. However, their results have not been very successful. In some cases, they've been very successful. In some other areas, um, not very successful. In the recent breakout of COVID-19, uh, many around the world rushed to use deep learning to help battle this pandemic. Uh, however, the outcomes were not very good and we didn't see deep learning helping much in the end. Um, even though early on there were many papers published um, saying that they had solutions and they could actually predict uh, COVID-19, but uh, a, a recent uh, paper showed that uh, all the assumptions that these papers had were, were wrong and the setup, the experimental setup, uh, were not correct, and if we um, and the re re results that these uh, papers conclude uh, actually can can be held. 
So one reason uh, that uh, it's very challenging for deep learning to be applied to medical imaging task is that uh, deep learning data, sorry, medical imaging data is not very deep learning friendly. In fact, uh, deep learning has very strong assumptions regarding the data. One of these assumptions is about the size of the data, right? Um, deep learning models, because deep learning models are more complex, uh, meaning that they have a lot more free parameters, uh, they require a lot of data. They tend to perform very good when you have a lot of data, but in the low data regime, they work even worse than traditional machine learning techniques. Another assumption, another assumption is, is that the data should be IID, which means independent and identically distributed. The challenge is that in real world, we have distribution mismatch between train and test. In this paper, uh, which I'm presenting here, uh, the authors have shown uh, that distribution mismatch between train and test uh, will uh, cause accuracy drop. And they have a simulated distribution mismatch by adding noise to the test set. The image in, in the left shows uh, how the accuracy of the model drops when different levels of salt and pepper noise is added to the test set. And uh, this drop in performance is consistent uh, when different architectures have been uh, tried out. Also, uh, the image on the right shows similar performance and similar drop in accuracy when uh, we have a contrast change. Uh, so, in terms of uh, challenges associated with uh, medical imaging. Uh, here I'm going to talk about the challenges that are associated with data. There are other challenges, but I think data imposes a huge challenge. And um, in the next section, I'm going to uh, delve more into, in, delve more in depth into these uh, challenges.